Hello everybody, it is Zen, and today we are going to be reviewing the sequel to The Shining, Doctor Sleep, by Stephen King. Uh, if you guys didn't know, there is a movie of this coming out fairly, fairly soon in November, if I remember correctly. It's in November, and I am going to be seeing it as soon as I can, because, well, I like to watch Stephen King movies, uh, and I thought that, you know, since I'll be reading, since I just read The Shining, by the way, in summer, I thought I'd read, you know, this book, and then go ahead and watch the movie and review that as well. So I have everything lined up, ready to go watch the movie, uh, but to do that, of course, I have to read the book. And so today, I'm going to go over my feelings for that and tell you guys what I think in comparison to specifically The Shining because duh like The Shining it's it's the original it's one of the most famous books ever written in recent history anyway and I think it's one of the best Stephen King books I've ever read I really really enjoyed reading The Shining as to where it stands, uh, I'd probably put it in my top 5 and I've read about 25 Stephen King books, so that, that gives you a general idea of what I'm thinking about the book. It'll probably be top 10 by the time I actually finish all of his books because of how, you know, in renowned it is. Obviously, it's really good. So Dr. Sleep does follow the same character as in The Shining and it is after the events of The Shining. It begins right after The Shining ends and it's like a couple months or something in between after that. And then even further after that, many, many years into the future. So it is the end, of, or the rest anyway, of Danny's life from The Shining. And so because of that, honestly, I really like that character. I'm not at all a fan of how Stephen King writes kids. In It, I thought it was absolutely great. I thought it was wonderful there. But in The Shining, I thought Danny was a very, very flat character and I didn't really enjoy him too much. But I did enjoy him as a sort of premise, as a sort of way so that we could see the world through his eyes because the way that we see the world through his eyes is extremely interesting because of his father, because of his situation. And that whole debacle is very, very interesting for me. But I don't think that his character was very good. Despite that, in this book, I think that he's absolutely improved. I think that he's a much more three-dimensional character. I find him very, very interesting, very, very relatable, and that doesn't happen very often. I do think that King put a lot more effort into his character this time, because The Shining had a very, very basic character, and even like, you know, generally kids are written to be very basic, and that's okay, I don't mind that. But Stephen King really writes them way too basic, or he writes them way too smart for their age, and that's kind of the problem I have. There's too many smart things, because he's way too smart in the book, and he's also way too basic, has almost no character in my opinion uh, compared to now because now he's wonderful. It really felt like I was coming back into a world that I already knew when I read this book because all of these characters that I really really enjoyed honestly Wendy Torrance I thought was actually a very good character. Dick Halloran he's also pretty cool and Jack Torrance who is the father of Danny Torrance and he doesn't obviously appear as you know visibly but his presence is always noted and it's very interesting to see him there as his as his you know remain the remainder of his existence is shown throughout the book and i really find that interesting because these characters are also very very complex and deep and i really enjoyed them the premise for this book is very very simple and very very cool it's the daniel the main character of this book takes after his father jack torrance and because of that there's a whole bunch of problems that come along with it in including a lot of more problems because of how he's copying his father and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on and i really really like that concept because it's a very, very obvious, like, a very big, important concept. It's a very good one. But at the same time, it's not overused. It's not something that was done too much. And I really, really enjoyed the novelty of it. At the same time, I really enjoyed the depth of it. I think it's a very smart way to do a book. And I'll just go ahead and say I enjoyed the beginning. I think the introduction of Daniel Torrance and Abra Stone are both, who are both main characters in the book, by the way, they're both very, very well introduced. I, I think I really enjoyed how they were introduced because it's a very subtle way to throw in a lot of details. And I really enjoyed the whole, it, it's very, very well rounded off. However, there are some characters that I really absolutely hated the introduction of specifically they are the not the true not I, I hated the introduction of them I thought that was absolutely boring the concept is horrible you've heard this before if you watched any review if you read any review the concept of the villains in this book is awful it started off awful it wasn't like it developed further on and we expected it to get better but it never got better it was from the very start it was very underwhelming I thought it was extremely boring and I had a very very difficult time reading it because I saw it I thought it was so so boring I thought that the concept was so bleh. And unfortunately, that is the big problem I do have with this book. The villains are so underwhelming, are so boring, they have such a dumb plan, they, they're they such boring characters in general, the concept, the look, everything about them is, is so bad in my opinion. And so that is why I dropped my mark so low if you've seen my Goodreads post. However, to make up for that, the stuff that I really did enjoy were them two main characters. I really thought that their bond, or see, it's, it's a little bit interesting about this part. See, the two main characters on their own 
are very, very cool. I really, really enjoyed both of the main characters on their own because they are very, very, very specifically different and very unique in their own ways. And I really enjoyed their own struggles, their own characters. By the way, Aberstone, I told you I generally don't like kid characters. I don't know if I mentioned this or not. She was a very good kid character. I thought she was very, very smart. At the same time, not too smart and also very complex. Not too complex, not too little complexity. It's all good there. But both of these characters individually have very, very good attributes. I thought they were very interesting. All that kind of stuff. Awesome. But when they came together, I thought it was very cool. It was good. I really enjoyed them. However, there was not, there was always that feeling of they're acting kind of weird. Now, there was an explanation given for why they were acting so weird because they immediately formed a bond for whatever reason. Um, and well, the reason it is explained, the reason is that because Abra thought that she was alone and now Dan came and now she's not alone. But I still think that the way she was acting did not at all. It's it's way too hyper intense for that kind of a thing. I expect them to get along, get along really well, but not go to that extent of like liking each other that much. And I don't, it seems like it's just overblown. And I found it was, it was always like something on my neck. Like it felt really, really weird. And I didn't, I thought it was just not really well put together. At the same time, it was that it was pretty great. It was pretty great when I, when they came together. They were talking. And they had a lot of fun. It was very interesting for me, and I enjoyed all of that. However, that feeling that it's very weird that it feels too much like they're they're getting along too well for you know people who have never met before. It it never goes away, and so just that's something that I will warn you of. The true knot eventually do get on to do some interesting things. I do enjoy their actual you know their their entire plot. I do enjoy what they do that is evil you know like the conflict that they bring that stuff is kind of interesting and i do enjoy that however at the same time that was like a very small part of their entire character the rest of it is really boring but this part i i thought it was it was a fun little part and i enjoyed it and i enjoyed how it connected up to the main character stories and going along i really enjoyed how they went together and you know that the, the whole middle art area was totally cool with me passing the middle area now first of all the climax is very very far down the road and the entire you know at this point i thought that we would get to the climax although it's half of the book the problem has come the problem has the conflict is about to happen oh wait it's not the real conflict there's a better bigger conflict later on okay well that kind of felt kind of weird because it's not a very long book i wouldn't expect there to be two big big climaxes that's just you know, it's really weird like that. I didn't really expect that. And so it was very, very weird when they finally finished the climax and immediately after there was another problem. Like I thought we were done, but of course we weren't done because it's only halfway through the book. And after that halfway point, it doesn't lag. I wouldn't say it lagged, but the main characters are doing some things that aren't very interesting. They're, they're talking a lot. They're just kind of hanging out. And then eventually they do something interesting. But then again, it's not very exciting. It's just kind of interesting. At the same time, the villains are doing almost nothing interesting they're just hanging around they're talking they're scared they're talking about destroying the other party like it's it, they're just talking nothing's really happening for the second half of the book until something does happen when something does happen it's not that interesting it's, it's kind of boring and so eventually the climax happens and as you know as you've heard if you've read any other review it's not that great um it's fine i don't really care about the ending there's not too much to talk about but it, it wasn't it was underwhelming considering the build-up and because Stephen King, he had this entire like team going on, like they were going to band together, they were gonna fight this entire team of evil, evil magic people, and then they just didn't. And so it was very underwhelming for me. So, you know, stuff like that, stuff like that surrounding the ending, surrounding the climax, wasn't very fun. And you know, that that it's not too bad though. It was a decent fight. It was kind of interesting. I enjoyed the premises and plot elements they put in. That kind of stuff was okay. So in general, the plot itself I thought was very meh. Overall, the characters, in my opinion, were pretty good, except for the villains. The real villains were pretty bad. And so that kind of stuff I've got for the plot and the characters. Now there's one other thing I want to mention before I end this review, which is the magic system. The magic systems in Stephen King books are very, very soft. In my opinion, they're a little too soft. In this situation, they're very, very, very way too too soft. They're, like I don't understand what's going on. Stuff keeps popping up uh, out of the blue. I don't understand. Like they're swapping minds or something. They're like con they're moving stuff from like a million kilometer like I don't I don't get it. it it doesn't make sense it's not very well explained new stuff keeps popping up and I, I can't stand it stuff just keeps happening 
and it's not very explained it's not very visual so i don't know how to imagine this kind of stuff and so overall in my opinion the magic system needs a little bit of work other than that there's not too much to talk about so i will go over my general thoughts again the plot is kind of meh going up to the middle of the middle of the thing it's pretty good and then after that it really tanks i really don't enjoy it after that the protagonists were very good characters and the antagonists were very very awful characters they were one of the worst villains i've read in a stephen king book i don't like them at all the magic system is very very badly defined however at the same time i really really enjoy the fact that this is a sequel to the shining because the fact that this is a sequel to the shining really elevates because it's almost like it's a second part of a, of a hidden chapter of the book and i really enjoyed the shining and so i really enjoyed the fact that the shining was continuing on and that's that's what i'm really happy about while reading this because it really, really did come back to a world and to a concept that I really enjoyed. And I'm very, very happy about that. So if you've seen my Goodreads, you already know, I rated this a three stars because of how meh it is. I don't really care for it. I don't really like it. And it's average. It's fine. Some great parts, other parts are kind of bad. So you know how I feel. Other than that, there's not too much to talk about. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this review, please hit the like button down below. Let me know what you thought of Dr. Sleep or of this review down in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. I am going to be putting out a Oathbringer review eventually in the future uh i'm halfway through still i'm working on them getting faster and at the same time there aren't going to be too many stephen king reviews for the next couple of i don't know weeks or something but if i do do a stephen king review there is going to be a book right there lizzie story i will be reviewing that other than that thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next video goodbye